Good afternoon. Welcome to Interesting Talks with Footprints Counselling Service. Today we're going to talk about sleep. And sleep is your superpower, something that a lot of us underestimate at times. As normal, like, share, leave comments on YouTube or on Facebook. And on YouTube, you can hit a button whereby you'll see all of my latest videos as they are released. Now, you cannot have good mental health or good physical health if you don't have a good sleep regime. If you don't sleep for eight hours a night or minimum seven, you're going to have issues with your body and your, your mental capacity. Now, poor sleep can also lead to people putting on weight. So those that are looking to lose weight or, or on a diet plan, of course you need to exercise, of course you need to watch your intake of food and what sort of food you take in. But also something you need to bear in mind is that you certainly need to get a lot of rest because studies show that people that have not having good rest, good sleep, good durations of sleep, tend to be overweight. Now, good sleep also helps us to improve our concentration. It is key to, to be able to maximise problem solving skills, to enhance your memory, as poor sleep impairs all of these brain functions. Longer sleep has shown to improve many aspects of your physical well-being. Athletes need to sleep a lot, footballers sleep a lot, for example, and it also helps your physical performance, no matter what you're doing or what lifestyle you have. Sleep is important. Now, I used to drive a bus, for example, and after five hours of driving, it was mandatory that you have to have a 30 minute break where you're not driving, where you can recuperate yourself so that you can go back on the road and drive safely. And driving a bus in London, you need to concentrate a lot of the time. Now, poor sleepers have a greater risk of what? Heart attack, disease and stroke. We need eight hours sleep to combat the risks of heart disease and strokes, serious issues. Sleep deprivation can cause pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes. In healthy adults, as little as six days, so it takes six days in studies that somebody who has sleep deprivation can start developing pre-diabetes. Can you imagine that? So if you're healthier you're not, and you start going for a period of not having good sleep, good rest, within six days, you could be at the stage of having pre-diabetes. Now, many studies show a strong link between sleep duration, lack of it, and type two diabetes, which is another issue, it's much more serious even. Now, poor sleep is linked to depression. 90% of people with depression complain about sleep quality, poor sleep is even associated with the increased risk, the increased risk of death by suicide. So getting at least eight hours sleep can improve your immune system and help you to fight the common cold. Sleep deprivation may reduce your social skills, so you're no longer able to conduct social skills amicably, and you won't be able to recognise people's emotional expressions, for example. So we spend about a third of our lives asleep, so it's important that our bodies are eating, drinking and sleeping. Eating, sleeping and drinking are as important as breathing. When we sleep, it's like a group therapy for all of our memories and all the information that we've taken in throughout the day. It's all picked up and put into its right files in our correct places inside of our minds. Now, this stage, I'm going to talk about some of the solutions, some of the tips, what I think will help those people that are struggling with sleep to conquer it. And I'll start off, and I suppose I'll call it in general, a, sh a sleep schedule. Now, our bodies have been designed over hundreds of thousands of years. Some people say millions of years. I'm not going to get technical on that, but for a long time to work within the cycles of daylight and darkness. So we get up in the day and we go to sleep at night. It's certainly been happening for thousands of years. So to me, it's important to get up at the same time each day, even in the weekends. So you establish a pattern of getting up at the same time every day, even at the weekends when you're not going to work. That will help you to slip into a nice sleep pattern. 
and it helps your body to stay in tune with a 24 hour light dark cycle. How to get to sleep? Well, that can be a problem. And here's the solution. Reading a book, relaxing to some relaxing music to help you to get ready to sleep. But watching upsetting stuff on TV, having um, stimulating conversations with your partner, no, that gives you the opposite effects. So a tip for the bedroom, the bedroom is for sleeping and for having sex. For sleeping and for having sex. Now, when you are in the bedroom, don't do anything stressful in the bedroom, particularly. That is like paying bills, having long debates with, for example, your partner. Do all those things before you get into the bedroom. So that when you get into the bedroom, you're in that state of actually, this is where I'm going to sleep. Okay? If you're having trouble with insomnia, it may be related to caffeine, alcohol, or tobacco. If you have, you know, if you, if you like, even if you wake up at night, it could be down to the fact that you've had caffeine in the day, or too late in the day, that you've had alcohol too late in the day, or that you're smoking. Okay? All of these, um, shall we say drugs, because they are, affect our sleep pattern. Alcohol seriously affects a night's sleep because it helps us to feel sleepy. But when we do actually go to sleep, there's a rebound effect that it wakes us back up again. And we have disturbed sleep throughout the night, which is not what we need. If you take tobacco, tobacco's got stimulants in it, and the stimulant is nicotine. And that nicotine will stimulate you to not have a good sleep that night or any night that you smoke before you're going to bed. Now, a lot of soft drinks have caffeine in them as well. So the caffeine in the soft drinks that you drink, if you drink them before you're going to bed, also are gonna affect you. Now, some people, when they drink coffee, even in the noon, like 12 o'clock in the day, the caffeine doesn't even leave their system until nighttime. So be aware of that. And if you do have problems like that, go to decaffeinated coffee, it will help you. Now exercise is also good. Um, it helps you to, your body clock to work in a nice way. And when you come to rest, you will rest. But again, don't exercise close to your bedtime because obviously when you exercise, adrenaline is released. And the adrenaline running in your system will stop you from sleeping, okay? So by just making simple changes to your sleep-wake patterns, maybe all that's necessary for you to improve your sleep pattern, okay? So first thing, have a sleep schedule. Get up at the same time. How do we go to sleep? Do we read a book? Do we listen to some soft, relaxing music? If you have troubles with insomnia, check out what coffee you're drinking. Is it decaf? Do you smoke close to bedtime? Are you drinking alcohol? And last but not least, getting some regular exercise. I mean, that works on many different levels of your life. But when it comes to having a sleep pattern, if you've got a regular, regular exercise, you, your heartbeat and your heart rate will normalize. And as long as you don't exercise close to bedtime, you'll find that you have a good night's sleep. So if you like this video, share it with your friends. Um, if you know anybody who particularly has an issue with insomnia or sleeping, and they've not put two and two together, which to me, a lot of these things are quite common sense, um, then send them this video. Thank you very much for listening. And till next time, take care of yourself. And as normal, try to stay positive. Take care. Bye-bye.